Okay, so uh, we have like one hour of, of the presentation. Then in the second hour from six till seven, I guess there's some other team want, wanting to present. Um, I mean, that's what the, the schedule says. I don't know. Oh, great. So, yeah, I, I, I didn't know who was. So, uh, from six till seven is your slot. Is that okay? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, cool. I need like 45 minutes. Yeah, likewise. Okay. So, um, hi, everybody. I'm Mateusz Jekowicz uh, from Slovenia. Uh, the piano guy is my nick. Uh, this is Reinhard Katzmann and Georg Rudolf. Um, we are the fun, fun, founding members of Canorus. Now, I guess most of you don't, didn't hear for Canorus yet. Or maybe you did. <laughs> so um, the whole story started back in 2004, 2003, 4, um, when uh, Jörg Anders, the original author of Note Edit, um, stopped or yeah stopped contributing to the Note Edit. And back there, Note Edit was, hmm, I think, the most sophisticated uh, notation editor for Linux at that time. So this was when Musa score was in alpha, pre-alpha stage and wasn't anywhere near the day. And um, we were maintaining the note edit project. And in one point of time, when Qt4 was released, um, and then KDE4 was announced, um, we decided to, so we, we wanted to migrate NoteEdit from KDE3 to KDE4 and Qt4, but it seemed uh, too overwhelming. So basically, we dropped NoteEdit uh, over two or three re released versions and decided to write our own um, music notation application. Uh, the main goals were, okay, besides uh, using the modern, for that time, modern tools like Qt4 and making the application cross-platform, Note that it wasn't cross-platform. Recall that it's, it's KDE three. It was KDE three application. Uh, so we decided to write our own application. We named it Canorus, and in 2006 we had uh, the first release. Um, so that's it. Then in 2009, development mostly stopped because of the real life jumping in, the family and kids and so on and so forth. And now we got older and the kids grown up, grew up and uh, it's time to go back to development. <laughs> so, um, Canoros is a cross-platform application. We provide packages for uh, Debian uh, Windows, and we provided packages for Mac OS X, but the guy mm. who built the packages um, uh, doesn't provide it anymore. So if there are any Mac users here, uh, you're welcome to build your DMG packages or whatever and um, contribute to the latest version, la latest subversion trunk uh, to us. We didn't migrate to Git yet because we didn't yet. yet. We will. Okay, so this is Canorus. The first thing you notice is, um, so you start with... Uh, you have I have, oh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, Slovenian. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, English. So the first thing you notice is you have two staves here, um, which are infinitely long. <laughs> okay. And in each staff, in each staff, you have two voices. One, two, one, two. So this LCD button, for those of you who know Note Edit, uh, is actually the same principle. Um, so the main con. So uh, in 2006, from 2004 to 2006, um, I was attending uh, the secondary. We call it the secondary music school, high music school in Slovenia. Uh, I was doing this um, music theory course, and um, usually, so it's 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 kind of a com composition style um, music school. And the what I did was um, I, I made some arrangements, I made some compositions, and basically I all did it uh, on by hand, and 
the main goal of Canoros at that time was how could we design a, a notation, music notation application who provides the most natural user interface for a composer uh, to write it, uh, his own score. Because at that time, uh, the user interface of Finale just sucked. Sibelius was still in early 2000, not there yet. And usually when you pick up the paper and when you write some scores, you just you know, sketch the score. You just write notes and you place a bar line wherever you like. You, you can put, I don't know, 10 quarter notes in a four beat bar and you don't care. It's just a sketch. And similarly, we wanted to implement this kind of a... So th this is our main paradigm and the main difference between other notation software as uh, Musa score today or, or Finale or Sibelius, where first you need to set, I will make a score which has 100 bars done, and you have it. <laughs> so this is the concept which is weird for, for, for a composer. So if you want to insert some notes, uh, you click on the insert notes rests button here and you insert some notes. Mm. Ah, Qsynth, what's wrong? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we play it, fine. <laughs> okay. So the main. So okay. Now uh, let's remove the second voice. We don't need it. Um, the main feature. I mean, it's, it's not a bug. It's a feature actually. But the main uh, thing we we support is you can just add another quarter note into the first bar, for example. We just make this. Here. Okay. So the auto bar placement detected in the previous bar we have four quarter notes and now we need to introduce a new bar. But hey, you can just remove the bar here, the bar line. And now, okay, it's a pickup measure. Um, and you can remove the note here and it works. And you can make another note here, for example. And here you might notice that. There's this um, spell checker thing we integrated, which marks that this bar line here is broken. This bar here obviously contains too much notes. So you can do that. It's allowed. And that's the main difference between our uh, music score and others. And this is exactly how composers usually do. They don't care about bars, measures, and, and so on. They first need, need, need to, to design um, a melody or a theme, and then they make I don't know, a, a polyphony, and then they take the, the same theme and paste it somewhere else. So copy and paste feature we also support. Uh, you can just take this, do edit copy, and click here and do it paste. It doesn't care about the bars, it doesn't care about the bar lines. Um, so you can switch the clef in the middle, and this happens. And yet, yet again, you can just copy this and you paste it here or below here, for example. It just works, okay? So the whole concept of having a score full of bars and each bar contains some notes in, in a first voice or a second voice or whatever is here removed. Bar line is just another music element. You can, you can, you can, you can uh, draw it wherever you want. Um, okay, now from the features point of view, well, we support, yeah, I, th I think we're, half away to, to all the notated features though. Uh, but basically, so we have slurs, we have different um, types of clefs. Um, we have, what's this? Oh, uh, that's, a, that's a key signature. So it's, it's a C minor here or G major here. Um, different types of time signatures, again, you can Right, whichever time signature you want. Here, 
and see the whole score, it, it, it works. Okay, there are some spell checker errors, obviously, but this is allowed, okay? Um, what else? So, different types of bar lines. Um, okay, tempo marks, uh, dynamics, um, fermata, pedal marking. So, all, all, all the um, expected features from a m music n notation software, also for, I don't know, specific note marks, we have the symbols. Okay, let's make some accents here. Uh, now, we have two staves for now. We can simply add another, st uh, another staff. And it's here. And then we make a clef. We make a time signature. We can copy it. So it's very natural, kind of a... We aim to be a natural user interface, right? Um, what else? So besides staffs, staves, we also support lyrics. So you can just um, write um, old McDonald's had a uh, mm, okay. cow. Okay. And uh, what else? So we have this, um, ah, this feature wasn't, um, so this is the, the figured bus marks. I don't know if you used it any time. So basically, uh, from the music theory point of view, you say write a chord of six here. Okay, should work. It doesn't work. It's broken. So I didn't use this in five years, I, <laughs> I think. Um, so this uh, figured by, but, but, but I have the example here, I think. Um, so it's it's a shipped example. Canoros trunk, and it's oh examples. Sorry, examples. This one. Yeah. So um, these are the marks, the the figured bus marks, and you can just change it to whatever. So here you can add, I think, another one here. Yeah. So this means you 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 should put a um, a chord on top of this bass note, uh, which which has a fourth and a third. So for those of you who play organ, should be familiar familiar with that. <laughs> um, now. This yellow track here, so uh, this is the stave, this is the lyrics track, this is the figured bus track, and this is the function marking track. Now the function marks um, denote which degree, this is again used in, in, in music theory, sorry, yeah. Chords? Do you support uh, jazz notation as well, like the jazz chords notation? Oh, jazz! Uh, no, no, no. It's actually uh, th these marks are taken from uh, baroque. Yeah, yeah, style. baroque music. Yeah, but you don't support jazz notation like you would find in a real book or something. Uh, not yet, but you can add just a text. Oh yeah. In top of the note, so you can always do that. Okay. So, Yeah. So this works, but and it's also exported to Lillipond, I think. Um, so yeah, this works. But uh, the 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 guitar, uh, guitar chords and this uh, human readable chord notation is not there yet. I mean, it wasn't important. So this this yellow and this blue uh, tracks here, uh, I implemented that back in 2006 when, when I was attending these uh, music theory courses. Uh, and uh, this is the way we marked the chords. So, okay, for example, this is the F major. Um, this is just one, one homework, one task f from that time. And usually the um, the music harmony um, um, exercises are given, you have a bass line given, and then you have this six here, 
which means that this should be a sixth chord on top of this G note here. And uh, what you need to do is write other three voices, the, the top three voices, um, fo uh, following obeying uh, some rules. You, you cannot have parallel fifths or parallel octaves or many other rules. Uh, so this is the basic mu mu music har harmony Bach and other classical composers um, originated from. And this yellow um, track here denotes which, well, how is it called, which degree of, uh, of, of, of the F major the chord is. So this is the tonic degree, this is the seventh degree, tonic, dominant tonic, and so on. Second degree here, and so on. Yeah. So those of you familiar with this classical notation, um, so this can be changed, for example. This all works. Um, now what else? Oh, well, we have uh, undo redo, naturally. So this works. Um, and for printing, we didn't complicate. So you you may notice the the whole user interface is like a technical technical sketch of your score. It's not aimed. Again, in contrast to to, to Musa score and Finale and Sibelius, it's not aimed to be a nicely typeset score. It's just a technical kind of a sketch of your score. And that's exactly what uh, uh, composers, um, in, in, in our opinion, should use and should see. It's more, it's more close to, to a composer than to you know, a, fi a final uh, an end user. So eventually, when you click the print preview, uh, the whole file is exported to Lillipond format, and Lillipond does the dirty work for you. So this is the, OK, that's the, the PDF. Yeah, typesetting of very high quality, yeah. <laughs> um, so for other details, what, what else do we support? So there's a nice um, feature. Usually when you, hmm, so I don't have any MIDI, MIDI do, I have a, do we have a MIDI keyboard here? Uh, any? Yeah, so basically we have this uh, MIDI recorder, which uh, just grabs all your MIDI events you set in the config file, in the options, and it, it is, yeah, I think I have it, but yeah, not installed. Okay, so here, usually if you're a composer, you first uh, do some improvisation, and this is where you, you, where you store your MIDI file. Oops. <laughs> yeah, it's still the beta, beta phase software. But we have the uh, we, we have the recovery uh, integrated uh, in implemented, so we didn't lose much. Um, so the the recorded MIDI file is then saved along the score, right? So uh, originally you can save into Canoros document. It's just an XML file, uh, our own format, and this Canoros archive is actually the the XML format plus all the recorded uh, stuff. Uh, of your score. So it's um, just a zipped archive. Um, what else? Uh, we have... So, we have multiple views. So, for example, you can... If you just want to write the... Um, the, same, the same theme as in the beginning, for example, one third lower, you can just do that by watching at the, the beginning of the score and yeah. whatever. Um, and one of the features which is currently, I mean, it's not broken, but just the user interface to, to our Python is broken. Uh, so one one of the ideas we had is uh, to make Canorus as um, open as possible, so people can write their own plugins for it. And um, one of the plugins, uh, so you write plugins in Python, and the way how we do it is you can. Uh, write the plugin for Canorus and you call the plug the plugin from Canorus user interface, or 
you write your own application, which just uses Canorus for the backend. For example, we have a very good MIDI importer um, code designed by Georg back there. Um, and if you just want to import uh, some MIDI files and then analyze them in Python or do whatever you want with them, you can import our Canorus um, Python backend. Uh, it's here. It's here. So, okay, I Python. So basically, what you do is um, you do import Canorus Python. Uh, sorry, wrong version of Python, I Python 3. Import Canorus Python. Okay, and you can use any internals we use. So you can just write doc equals new document. And then, okay, so what exactly this document offers? Um, yeah, you can add sheet. Um, whatever. Okay, so what do we need? Um, yeah, I mean, y you get the idea. So you can call uh, whichever internal function here, and then you can export it or do whatever. Um, and I'm not sure if I have a working example here, but one of the ideas was, so we have these plugins here, and if I link the Harmonia, uh, give me a second. Um, plugin, yeah. So, Hope it works. Might work, might not work. Oops. Sorry for that. <clears throat> okay. This is another arrangement I did. So it's a Bob Dylan. Um, Blown in the wind for four guitars <laughs> ensemble. Uh, and the lily pond output is looks kinda nice. Um, so what I wanted to show is this uh, export sheet to harmonia. Ah, okay. Again, another bunch of, main, uh, of code. Maybe this works. So basically, for my for my bachelor uh, thesis, I developed um, a Harmonia plugin for Canorus. And what this plugin does is it finds the most important melodies of your score. So basically, I serial, I, I, if, if a score has multiple voices, I, serial, I, I serialize all the score, and then I found the patterns inside the score which are long enough, which are repeated enough times, so frequent enough, and interesting enough. Interesting means that they are rhythmically and melodically uh, interesting. <laughs> so basically, I, I measure the uh, entropy uh, of the uh, rhythm and melody inside a theme. Um, and here, I'm not sure whether this... Oh, great. So again, this software wasn't run for quite some time, but basically you um, import some... Ah, crap. No, you don't import anything. <laughs> Um, so basically, I, I can actually show you the, the thesis. Um, I have a nice screenshot there, so you get the idea how what this. Um, Okay. 
Okay. So you get something like this. You import uh, a score, MIDI score or something, and then this is uh, this is the minuet. Um, and then it so in the back end it uses Canoros to import the MIDI uh, and make all the the events and the, the pitches. And then I, I I search for the patterns and basically I create the suffix tree. So the first phase is to clean up this uh, crossings of voices because it's just MIDI. You don't know which voice is which. And eventually, I make a tree. So here, here for example, is a repeated um, same pattern. Right? We have uh, four eighth notes, one quarter note, and the relations between uh, consecutive notes are the same. So we have a second, 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 yeah, four seconds in a row. Um, yeah, and this is the user interface of this Harmonia application. Um, and so here we have the length, the length of the pattern, number of occurrences, um, and then the calculated weight which consists of the length of the number of the frequency and the entropy of the melody and the rhythm. Um, so yeah, this, this is the my practical application of what you can do with uh, this uh, Python bindings. Um, and we use uh, Swig to generate uh, bindings um, from C++ to Python. Yeah, that's it. So this is so this is a Bach, I think it's Fug number twenty, yeah. And uh, the red is the most common theme found by Harmonia. So this is is this one? Da 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 da. Ah, uh, even 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 further, yeah. And you see, this is the same theme, and this here is the same theme in, in another voice, and here is the third uh, repetition of the theme in the bottom voice. And yeah, so on. It's in Slovenian, sorry. <laughs> and here is the here is the harmonia inter interpreted interpreted um, melody. So we see actually it, it's the same, but it didn't uh, recognize the the eight notes because it was uh, imported from from MIDI file, and yeah, you cannot. Uh, okay. So um, that's it. How, how much time do we have? Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, not US. Oops. Sorry. Okay. So. Um, There are some, okay, I guess we should um, write a score now. So I'm sure you will notice quite some bugs currently in the process of making music right now. Uh, and that's also, so this this workshop today is meant, I mean, Canoris is far from being a final product, obviously. But what we want is to get some feedback of our main concepts we strive, we, we strive to achieve, okay? This composer's best friend, pencil and paper, like natural user interface, which we want to kind of uh, achieve and that's where it's different than other uh, score editors. So, uh, all the McDonald's have a, uh, have a cow. Okay, let's do it. Um, so, the numbers one, two, f four, five, six is the note length that's similar to other note editors. And one of the things you'll notice is we have this sh shadow gray notes, which are shown in both staves. <laughs> now, this might be uh, this might be inconvenient for the first timers, but um, 
we'll see later on that when you write, uh, for example, the second, when, when we will fill the second stuff, um, it's very important not to you know cross voices or repeat the same the same thing the other voice is already singing or playing, and this is where the second note in, in the second stuff helps you out so you don't cross uh, something. Okay. Okay. Or this is actually a half note and a dot. And then we use copy paste. Oh, we we remove the second voice here, or maybe not. Okay, let's leave it for now. Go on. Is this right? Okay. Okay, that's it. End bar. So, uh, play. Um, instrument. Um, so what's this? Uh, banjo? Does this exist? Okay. Cool. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, save often, save frequently. <laughs> uh, so it's kind of a strong um, examples. Uh, mini lack. Let's put if anything goes wrong as XML document. Okay, now the other. The other scores. Um, let's let's begin with the second voice. So, one of the issues we have here is if I write the second voice now, um, if I put it here, for example. So this this green green rests here are the rests of the second voice. The first voice is in the background grayed out okay now if i click after the rest and before the second rest canoros recognize this as i want to insert a note between the two rests so what it does is it keeps the first rest alone it keeps the second rest where, where it is and it inserts a new note in between but now you mess up the first voice because in the first voice, now we have four quarters, and here now we have five quarters overall. So it will insert another quarter rest into the first voice. So that's one of the problems you um, get into where you want to allow this freedom for user. Yeah. So that's exactly what happens. So it inserts a quarter note after the first uh, rest, before the second rest. And now if we check the first voice, now the first voice has a quarter rest here. Now the question is whether, I mean, what's the expected kind of a scenario we should allow? Major I mean, other, uh, other, other note editors simply don't allow it if you want to insert a quarter note between the rests. It, uh, so the original finale had uh, this uh, error message pop up uh, showing up. So, uh, yeah, I mean, how to solve that now? Well, we can just select this and hit Shift Delete. So, ordinary delete turns a note into a rest. If you hit Shift Delete, it, um, yeah. And this one should be invisible. Yeah. Undo, undo, undo. Okay. Hmm. 
Okay, so in this case, you need to be very careful. Okay, so if you want to replace the rest, you need to insert it where the rest is. So you should go with that here. example uh, and by the way this is uh, this is F major right uh, G G major uh, so it's this okay okay sounds nice second wise Oops. By the way, the, the second part should also be banjo. Okay, so I think you, you, you grasp the concept. Um, now the the bass clef. What should we do? Mm, well, why not? It's it's a nice folk, folk instrument. So now you see the the note, the gray note in the first stave. That's where we want to. So see whether we uh, duplicate the same note in an, another voice. That's something you should always uh, avoid uh, when doing the arrangement, of course. So that's why we, we, we have it enabled by default. So it should be like this. that <laughs> and this would be uh, this one okay so oh, that's it yeah and the uh, lyrics lyrics track of course um, we all I had as an ultimate Donald Donalds had a cow A E I O U and uh, this copy paste oh here is nothing nope so copy paste for lyrics with also so crap work. Um, yeah. Um, by the way, there's a nice feature I didn't talk about is this view. Where's the view? View 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 view. Yeah. So here we have a score view, and we also have this um, source view. By the way, this this gray on top is the ruler. I guess you noticed the number of um, current bar. So the source view gives you the Lillipond output. Or if you select the voice, you get a Lillipond source of that voice. Now we also um, spent some time and um, implemented the Lillipond parser. So basically, I mean, I, I don't want to use the Lillipond parser in current state, but if we make a new document, uh, I can show how we parse Lillipond. So basically, if you're more keen to Lillipond, you can just use uh, that syntax. So it's like, so it's G4. Then the second. 
and um, a, so this one's up. Or commit. Yeah. So that's for that's for all the lily ponders. And the auto bar hmm, is not there, <laughs> so it is there when you when you use the mouse, but not that. Oh yes, yes. You also see the 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 Lilipond syntax below uh, automatically um, uh, being gen generated. <coughs> What's going on now? Yeah. So. You can notice this this idea of having this friendly user interface and freedom for Composer uh, brings lots of challenges. And we try to think about them, we try to trickle them down, but um, the basic concept how we do it is you can put in any voice whatever you like, and then we call something like synchronized voices, and it makes sure that shared elements like bar lines and so on are aligned uh, because so each voice can have whichever music elements, uh, quarter notes, half notes, uh, rests. But when it comes to the bar line, the bar line should be the same bar line in both voices. Now, what happens when you have a. Yes. Polymetric music? So if you have different um, metrics, time signatures. Yes. This. Oh, sorry. Yes, you can. Something, something like like this. Yeah. It works. Uh, I'm not sure if Lilipond supports it out of the box or you need some special syntax. No, for Lilipond you need to set it manually. Yeah. So printing this mm, crap. So again, uh, so so b the the main model we use is um, you have staff and inside the staff you have multiple voices and each voice contains the music elements. Music elements can be playable, which means the duration is not zero, and it can be non-playable, which means the duration is zero. Non-playable elements are bar lines, um, time signatures, key signatures, and so on. Playable elements are rest quarters, and so on. And once you're done with editing the voice, you call the synchronize voice um, method, which makes sure that all the non-playable elements, which are obviously shared among two voices are correctly aligned. And if they are not, well, it inserts some rests so that it can be aligned correctly. So if you have a whole note and a whole note, and below you have um, a half note dotted and another half note dotted, and you call this synchronized voices, then you have the bar line after the first whole note, but then this conflicts with the, the half note in the middle of the, the second voice. So in this case, it actually appends, so it doesn't break up the, the half notes, it appends a rest to the first voice, so it can add a bar line uh, and fixes it. So that's, that's the main concept behind it, but I don't know if it's the right one. I mean, it seems natural for the composer, but uh, it's so difficult and so many you know, cases you need to cover. Uh, it complicates things hugely, but still, I think that's the right the, the right kind of the direction to think. Um, yeah. So going through through the options dialog, we have this new shortcuts uh, we implemented during this and last year's lack. Um, the idea here is to also have a MIDI uh, shortcut. For example, you can reserve uh, some MIDI key on your MIDI controller to insert bar line, for example, whatever. 
or to no, hold down some note and then click insert and you, you don't need to hit the, the, the key on, on a keyboard, physical keyboard of, the, of your notebook. You can just use another MIDI key for the MIDI shortcuts command. So kind of merging the, the two together and make a hybrid shortcuts possible. That's what Reinhardt is currently doing the most. Um, yeah, loading, saving, and MIDI, and printing where you can set the, the typesetter and so on. So this is mostly for the Windows operating system where you need to set uh, the path to the Lillipond uh, installation manually. Um, and then we have properties of, of the score. So you see the user interface is like this. On the left-hand side, we have the insertion dialog. On the, tops, uh, on the top, we have the properties of the current, uh, of the current elements. So we have the time signature. Uh, for example, you have this here. For the clef, you have the offset, for example. Um, here, you, you can force uh, the, the accidentals. You can set the uh, stem direction and so on. Um, you also have the properties dialog where you have some other stuff like document title, arrangement composer, some predefined uh, copyright uh, ideas, um, number of lines. We also support that. Um, some MIDI pitch offsets, so the MIDI is played differently. That's this is this is this is where I, I encountered that um, if you play for clarinet, right? Uh, it has different pitch than the one you. It's 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 written there. <laughs> so yeah, sure, go on. Okay. Um, in a short time, you showed a lot of cool things. I mean, um, and a lot of crashes. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think you can live with crashes. I mean, I mean, the idea is it's only zero point seven. Um, but in your in your opinion, what are some of the? You've touched on a few of the shortcomings. What are some of the major shortcomings at the moment that you see? And I don't see crashes as a major shortcoming. <laughs> some things to be fixed, you know, but. Um, no, I mean, um, personally, I used Canorus for quite some projects, but these are mostly like few few pages long arrangements for um, voice and piano, for example, or for guitars or something something like like that. Combination of lyrics and uh, music. For this purpose, it's great. So the basic workflow is like you design your score in Canorus and then you export it to Lillipond and then tune some other printing stuff there in Lillipond, and you print it and take it. So for this scenario, uh, Canorus is actually suffices, and I think it doesn't have a, a, any shortcomings, in, in my opinion. But if I compare it to Musa or, hmm, let alone Filipinali or Sibelius, um, I just don't, don't want to go there, OK? <laughs> So I'm sure there are there's contemporary music. We we don't have absolutely no idea how to do it. We we don't support chords yet. We don't support um, um, so triplets kind of work, but again, I mean if you combine triplets with this um, freedom, composer's freedom. Uh, it's just bad. You get this rounding errors, and then you have the second device, which has ordinary notes, and now what? <laughs> so triplets are here, you can use it, but, and you can also set uh, triplets of, um, so we, we, we want to have eight notes instead of five, and you can, let's put this one, and um, this, works. It should even be printed. Yeah. Uh, so 
I think the the st stability issues is in fact a, a major shortcoming. We need lots of testers, so we urge everybody here to download. We just uh, so the, the the only dependency we actually have is the Qt5 dependency. Uh, everything else is mostly shipped with your distribution. If you don't want to use any scripting, um, this is totally fine. We do, we, do, we don't need Python. If the CMake finds it, then fine. We, we use Python. We don't need Python. Um, yeah, but, but for Reinhardt, Reinhardt, stop for 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 scripting. If you don't want to, if you don't want scripting, yeah, you don't need tweak. So it's it. it. Uh, do you need a special version of GCC or C line or something? No. So uh, after the note edit uh, problem with, uh, so note edit depended heavily on KDE3, not only Qt3, but KDE3. And for the for the Conoros, we said, no, we, do, we don't want any dependencies, just Qt. And then slowly plugins ideas came around and let's use Python and so on. But still, you can still use Conoros with uh, Alza Deo you need for, for the for the MIDI to work and Qt5 or Qt4 even. But we we dropped Qt4 uh, th this weekend because Qt5 is now everywhere. So, um, so basically, yeah, we we urge people to try it out and to to try it out in in, in your scenario for your music and uh, report any success stories or problems. I'm sure you will encounter many problems, many fr frustrations. So please share this w with us so we can make a better you know. This whole this whole thing is experimental. I mean, maybe nothing will come out of it. Maybe we'll move something to better. Yeah, also... Canorus is on SourceForge still, yeah, yes. Quite. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you should use the current trunk. The current trunk is 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 okay. You didn't release any any version for as a stable right now. Uh, so we released the last version is from the last year's LAC. Uh, it's this one zero seven two release candidate one, and we will release zero seven three uh, tomorrow or in the upcoming days. But basically, no major things are broken. So just check out the, the, the latest trunk and it should work out of the box. Um, but no releases, actually no, because we don't have time to release stuff <laughs> officially. Sorry. Okay, any questions? Huh? Ah, okay, it worked. Um, can I use uh, Canor as a, let's say, an, as an external editor for, um, for? Uh, so I'm writing a tracker myself, and um, I don't want to write a score editor as well. It would be nice uh, that um, if, if the, the notes that I can enter in the piano roll, I could also enter in a score editor just by uh, starting it as an external editor. And uh, so basically passing passing a set of notes to it and then getting it back. Yeah, this might be. I also thought <laughs> I had the, the the same issue there, and I. But then I I decided to to solve this differently. But yeah. Uh, hmm. Yes, I think so. We we have to let's say Canoros. I think so. Actually, we have. Do you have the microphone? You can actually um, create a library um, from from exactly uh, yeah. A, so uh, and you can use this as a base and uh, import it in your program, and then you just need to call the right. Uh, as we do in our main window, you need to set up basically what we did in our main window in your own program. 
Well, that's not really an uh, external editor. For instance, uh, my program would have to support Couture then, which it doesn't do. So I'm really talking about launching an external program, which would you can notice here? No, it's not an external program. It's just uh, uh, calls, calls to the library, actually. Yeah, I couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. I, I can start an external program from mine, but I cannot link a QT application into my program. Oh, it's not uh, GPL. No, it's not QT. Okay. <laughs> so uh, external application... Uh, so we need a mechanism to to send the data to Conoros and then receive it back. Yeah, that, that was part of the question. It could be a file, for instance. Mm. I guess so. <laughs> but for example, you, you don't want to parse Conoros document. No, but so, I would be asking you, um, what would be the best way in order to mm. use Conoros as an external editor? How would I pass data into it and get it back if, if I don't want to implement a score editing for my notes myself? I think, I think um, it should be the other way around. I think you should. So when you launch the external application, you write a plugin for Canorus, which reads data from your application. So you have your document at your application. Then you launch this external uh, Canorus, and on startup, it calls your application. Um, reads data from your application, fills the score, you, you do the score stuff, and then when, when you click the save button, it actually sends data using you, this plugin. So this plugin it would be a glue between your application and, and Canoros. So this is, I think, and it's a, an external application still, so you don't link anything with, with anything. The only thing you need to do is this, um, this plugin. And this plugin could, could easily be done in Python, so uh, so the only question is how to send data back when you click save button. Uh, you should expose your your functions somehow mm -hmm. to Python in this case. That's how I, I, I would do it. I don't know, any other ideas okay. from the audience? Yeah, so this uh, in inter exchange format somehow. I mean, we support music XML, import export. We support MIDI import export. So we don't support notated import yet. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we should do that because we have lots of, I mean, personally, I have some scores in notated written, and there's no way to you know, open that scores anymore because notated requires KDE 3. You don't have KD3 now anymore, so we don't have noted it. So these scores are just lying there and no one can read it. I mean, it's, it's an ASCII format though, but nevertheless. Okay, thank you. <laughs>